All right, ready to dive deep. We're taking a look at uh, Meta, Facebook's third quarter earnings report. Sounds good. And let me tell you, there's a lot to unpack. I bet. It's a big one. Yeah, you've got the reports, press releases, you know, all that stuff. But who really has the time? Not me. Exactly. So we're going to break it all down. Yeah, let's start big picture. First thing that jumped out at you. Honestly, the size of these numbers, it's kind of wild. Okay. 19%. Uh, Year-over-year revenue jumped to $40.59 billion. Wow. That's not just growth. It's like adding a whole small country's GDP to the revenue. In just one quarter. That's right. Crazy, right? It is. And then the diluted earnings per share, 603, tells the same story. Meta's doing pretty well, huh? Yeah, they are. But what's interesting to me is like, what's behind it all? Right, right. What's the secret sauce? Is it just the usual advertising? Or there's Um, something more going on. Advertising is a big part of it, for sure. Yeah. But there's more to the story. Let's look at it this way. They had 7% more ad impressions across their platforms. So more people seeing those ads. Makes sense. But get this, the price per ad, that went up 11%. Oh, wow. So not only are they showing more ads, they're charging more, too. Exactly. That's power. It really is. So what does that tell us, then? Well... It seems like there's a big demand for Meta's ad space. Huge demand. Businesses want to get their message out there, even if it costs more. Even at a premium, yeah. And that shows just how strong Meta is in the digital ad world. It's true. they got billions of users. Businesses have got to get to them somehow. Right. It's a captive audience. Speaking of the future, though, they also gave us some guidance for next quarter. They did, yep. Didn't say. They're predicting revenue will be between 45 and $48 billion. Wow. That's a big range, yeah. But even the low end, that's still huge growth. Yeah, for sure. They're expected to keep doing well, but they also mentioned something about significant capital expenditures growth in 2025. Uh-huh. Yeah, that caught my eye too, especially for Reality Labs. What's that about? So that's the part of Meta that's working on the metaverse. Metaverse. Exactly. And it seems like they're really going for it, even with some problems. Problem? Like what? Well, like the fact that Reality Labs is actually losing money. Operating loss is increasing. Huh. So those metaverse investments aren't really paying off yet. Not yet, no. But Meta's playing the long game here, I think. They think the metaverse will eventually make money. That's the idea. It'll become a big, profitable thing. And, you know, change how we use tech. It's a big bet. It is, definitely. But let's talk about something that's already making waves. Okay, what's that? Meta AI. They're really putting a lot of resources into that. Meta AI, right? Yeah, it's a big part of their plan. Yeah. And you can already see the impact. Yeah, you mentioned that fact about Meta AI running on, what was it? Over 100,000 GPUs. Yeah, 100,000 GPUs. That's crazy. It's a massive amount of computing power, for sure. So what are they using all that for? Well, for one, it's powering all their AI stuff across their platforms. Uh Uh-huh. You know, better ads, personalized recommendations, things like that. Okay. And with, get this... 500 million monthly active users on Meta AI. Wow. It's already reaching a huge audience. It's impressive. But where's all this going, like long term? What's the plan for Meta AI? How is it going to change things for us, the users? That is the big question, isn't it? I mean, just think about it. Yeah. Meta AI could change how we interact with everything online, even the world around us. Mm. Imagine your social media, you know, curated by algorithms that know you better than you know yourself Mm -hmm. or AI assistants helping you with everything digital. Huh. It's exciting, but kind of scary, too. It is. It's like we're on the edge of something totally new. We don't know what's coming. And that's why it's so important to understand it. Exactly. Meta AI, it's a powerful tool. It could do a lot of good, but there are questions, too. Like what? Privacy, control, the future of our digital lives. Big questions. Big questions, for sure. So we've got the financials, the guidance, the metaverse, and this whole AI thing. Mm. Where do we even go from here? I think it's time to zoom out a little. Look at the bigger picture, you know? What are the big trends that are going to shape the tech world? And how will they affect meta? All right, let's do that. (laughs) What trends are you seeing that could uh, make or break meta? Well, one big one is the rise of the creator economy. The creator economy. Yeah, more and more people are building businesses online, communities online. And platforms like uh, Instagram and TikTok, they're becoming essential tools. Right. So this is great for individuals, 
but it's a challenge for Meta too. How so? They need to give these creators the tools they need, right? Uh huh. But they also need to make sure their platforms stay attractive to everyone else. So they got to keep the influencers happy, but not leave everyone else behind. Exactly. It's a tough balance. Definitely. So what else? What other trends should we be watching? Another big one is ethical AI and responsible data use. You know, we touched on it before, but there are growing concerns about privacy, bias and algorithms, misinformation, all that. Yeah. It puts pressure on Meta to develop AI that's not just powerful, but also fair, transparent, accountable. That sounds really hard. Can they actually do that? It's a challenge, but they have to... Consumers are getting smarter. Uh -huh. They're paying attention, and regulators are starting to take action, too. So Meta needs to show they're serious about these issues. They do. If they want to keep people's trust and avoid even more regulations, yeah. It's like they're walking a tightrope. Exactly. Pushing technology forward, but not forgetting about ethics. Right. And that's going to get even harder as things like the metaverse develop. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> We're talking about experiences that could blur the lines between, you know, real life and the digital world. That brings up a whole new set of craft. Oh, yeah. Mind boggling stuff. It is. What kind of questions should we be asking Meta about this? You know, about how they're going to handle these virtual worlds. Like what kinds of questions? Well, will they make user privacy and safety a priority in these spaces? Hmm. Will they be inclusive, accessible for everyone? Will there be rules for how people behave? in these virtual worlds. How will those be enforced? You know, these are all things they need to be thinking about right now. Yeah, it does feel like we're on the edge of a big shift. A huge shift. Yeah. And the choices Meta makes now, those are going to have big consequences down the road. For sure. But before we go too far into the future, let's come back to those regulatory challenges we talked about earlier. Okay. You mentioned antitrust and data privacy. Mm -hmm. Right. Can you explain this a little more? Sure. So in the U.S., Meta's facing scrutiny over how big they are, you know, their dominance. Right. Especially because they bought Instagram and WhatsApp. Right. Some people say that crushed the competition, gave Meta an unfair advantage in social media. Hmm. And what about the EU? I know they've been pretty tough on big tech lately. Oh, yeah. The EU has been really assertive when it comes to data privacy regulations, mm -hmm. you know, like the GDPR. Right. Those set strict limits on how companies can collect and use personal data. Makes sense. And Meta, well, they have a ton of user data. So they're a big target. A major one. So how is Meta responding to all this pressure? Yeah, are they fighting back or trying to cooperate? A little of both, honestly. Okay. They're putting a lot of effort into following the rules, changing their data practices, even going to court to challenge some regulations. Wow. But they're also trying to get ahead of it all by developing new privacy tech. So they're juggling a lot. They are. But let's not forget, Meta is more than just algorithms and balance sheets. Right. There are real people behind all this, billions of them, using Meta's platforms every day. Their lives are tied up with this technology. It's true. And that's why we need to think about the impact on society, right? Absolutely. How do their algorithms shape what we see, what we think? Yeah. How does their data collection affect our privacy? These are big questions for all of us. Like Meta's running this huge social experiment. That's one way to put it. Whether they mean to or not. Right. And we're all part of it. That's why we need to be informed, you know? Right. We need to understand how this technology works, the good and the bad, and what kind of future we want with it. So in this deep dive so far, we've looked at Meta's finances, the AI push, the metaverse, the regulations. Yeah, we've covered a lot. But I think there's something else we need to talk about, something people don't always focus on. What's that? Meta's company culture. How does their internal environment contribute to, you know, their wins and their losses? That's a great point. Yeah. Meta has a reputation, right? Fast moving, data driven, focused on results. Right. And that's definitely driven their success, all the growth and innovation. Uh-huh. And it's also caused some problems, hasn't it? It has. What kind of problems? Well, some say that their focus on growth, it's come at the cost of user privacy and well-being. Mm -hmm. Others point to times when their algorithms have actually promoted harmful content or, you know, helped spread misinformation. It's like they're trying to connect people, but they also have to protect them from harm. Exactly. And it's a tension they haven't quite figured out yet. They're constantly trying to find that balance. The balance between the good and the bad. Exactly. The potential benefits and the risks. This has been really eye-opening. It has, hasn't it? Made is a complicated company, really influential. Absolutely. But there's one more piece of this puzzle. I want to look at Mark Zuckerberg himself. Okay. The founder, the CEO, the, the guy behind the whole vision. How much does his leadership affect where Meta's going? 
I think Zuckerberg's influence is huge. He's not just the CEO. He's the visionary, the product leader, and, you know, love him or hate him, a cultural icon. Yeah. His decisions, they matter a lot, not just for the company, but for everyone who uses their platforms. So what's he like as a leader? Is he hands-on or more big picture? He's known for being very data-driven, you know? Mm -hmm. He uses testing and user data to make decisions about products. He's also super ambitious, sets big goals, and pushes his team to reach them. But he's had his share of criticism, too. Oh, yeah, especially lately. Some people question how he's handled data privacy, his response to misinformation on Facebook, even his whole vision for the Internet. It sounds like a lot of pressure. It is. A lot rides on him. So how's he handling it all? Yeah, how's he managing? He's shown that he's willing to change how he leads. He's talking more about social issues, engaging more with his critics, you know. Okay. He's trying to balance his big vision for the future with the real concerns people have right now. It's a tough act to balance. It really is. Huh? But he's shown he can adapt, both as a leader and with technology. Right. And that's going to be key as Meta faces all the uncertainty and opportunities coming their way. The next few years are going to be interesting. For sure. The decisions they make will have a huge impact on tech and our lives. This deep dive has been a whirlwind of information. It has. We've gone through Meta's financial performance, their AI ambitions, the whole metaverse thing. A lot to digest. But as we wrap things up, I'm curious, what's your overall take on Meta? Where do they stand in the grand scheme of things? You know, I think Meta is at a turning point. A turning point. They're a powerhouse, no doubt, but their future depends on how they deal with all these challenges we've talked about. Wow. Can they make the metaverse work? Yeah. Can they stay ahead in AI while still being ethical? How will they adapt to all the regulations? Big questions. Huge ones. Only time will tell how it all plays out. But for our listener, you know, someone trying to make sense of it all, what's the most important thing to take away from this deep dive? I hope they come away understanding that meta is complicated. It's easy to just see the headlines, the profits, the controversies. Right. But it's more than that meta is powerful. They can do good and they can do harm. And it's up to all of us to hold them accountable. To hold them accountable. To demand better, to shape the future of tech so it benefits everyone. That's a good point. We're not just passive users, right? Exactly. We have a role to play. We can shape how technology develops, make sure it serves us. By staying informed, asking the tough questions, demanding better from these companies, we can make tech more fair, more beneficial. I think that's the perfect way to end this. It has been a fascinating look into Meta. It has. And I hope our listener feels like they can keep exploring these issues. Me too. And remember, the future of tech, it's not set in stone. It's being written right now, and we all have a hand in writing it. It's a delicate balancing act. For sure. So what else? What other trends should we be watching? Another big one is ethical AI and responsible data use. You know, we touched on it before. Right. But there are growing concerns about privacy, bias in algorithms, misinformation, all that. Yeah. It puts pressure on Meta to develop AI that's not just powerful, but also fair, transparent, accountable. That sounds really hard. Can they actually do that? It's a challenge, but they have to. Consumers are getting smarter. Uh -huh. They're paying attention. And regulators are starting to take action, too. So Meta needs to show they're serious about these issues. They do. If they want to keep people's trust and avoid even more regulations, yeah. It's like they're walking a tightrope. Exactly. Pushing technology forward, but not forgetting about ethics. Right. And that's going to get even harder as things like the metaverse develop. Exactly. Exactly. We're yeah. talking about experiences that could blur the lines between you know, real life and the digital world. That brings up a whole new set of questions. Oh, yeah. Mind-boggling stuff. It, it is. What kind of questions should we be asking Meta about this, you know, about how they're going to handle these virtual worlds? Yeah, what kinds of questions? Well, will they make user privacy and safety a priority in these spaces? Hmm. Will they be inclusive, accessible for everyone? Will there be rules for how people behave in these virtual worlds? How will those be enforced you know, these are all things they need to be thinking about right now. Yeah, it does feel like we're on the edge of a big shift. A huge shift. Hmm. And the choices Meta makes now, those are going to have big consequences down the road. For sure. But before we go too far into the future, let's come back to those regulatory challenges we talked about earlier. Uh, okay. You mentioned antitrust and data privacy. I did. Can you explain those a little more? Sure. So in the U.S., Meta's facing scrutiny over how big they are you know, their dominance, right. especially because they bought Instagram and WhatsApp. Right. Some people say that crush the competition 
gave Meta an unfair advantage in social media. Hmm. And what about the EU? I know they've been pretty tough on big tech lately. Oh, yeah. The EU has been really assertive when it comes to data privacy regulations, uh -huh. you know, like the GDPR. Right. Those set strict limits on how companies can collect and use personal data. Makes sense. And Meta, well, they have a ton of user data. So they're a big target. A major one. So how's Meta responding to all this pressure? Yeah. Are they fighting back or trying to cooperate? A little both, honestly. Right. They're putting a lot of effort into following the rules, changing their data practices, even going to court to challenge some regulations. Wow. But they're also trying to get ahead of it all by developing new privacy tech. So they're juggling a lot. They are. But let's not forget, Meta is more than just algorithms and balance sheets. Right. There are real people behind all this. Billions of them using Meta's platforms every day. Their lives are tied up with this technology. It's true. And that's what we need to think about the impact on society. Absolutely. Yeah. How do their algorithms shape what we see, what we think? Yeah. How does their data collection affect our privacy? These are big questions for all of yeah. us. Like Meta's running this huge social experiment. That's one way to put it. Whether they mean to or not. Right. And we're all part of it. That's why we need to be informed. You know, we need to understand how this technology works, the good and the bad, and what kind of future we want with it. So in this deep dive so far, we've looked at Meta's finances, yeah. the AI push, the metaverse, the regulations. Yeah, we've covered a lot. But I think there's something else we need to talk about, something people don't always focus on. What's that? Meta's company culture. Yeah. How does their internal environment contribute to, you know, their wins and their losses? That's a great point. Yeah, Meta has a reputation, right? Fast moving, data driven focused on results. Right. And that's definitely driven their success, all the growth in innovation. Uh-huh. But it's also caused some problems, hasn't it? It has. What kind of problems? Well, some say that their focus on growth, it's come at the cost of user privacy and well-being. Mm. Others point to times when their algorithms have actually promoted harmful content or, you know, helped spread misinformation. It's like they're trying to connect people, but they also have to protect them from harm. Exactly. And it's a tension they haven't quite figured out yet. They're constantly trying to find that balance. The balance between the good and the bad. Exactly. The potential benefits and the risks. This has been really eye-opening. It has, hasn't it? Med is a complicated company, really influential. Absolutely. But there's one more piece of this puzzle. All right. I want to look at Mark Zuckerberg himself. Okay. The founder, the CEO, the guy behind the whole vision. Yeah. How much does his leadership affect where Med is going? I think Zuckerberg's influence is huge. He's yeah. not just the CEO, he's the visionary, the product leader, and, you know, love him or hate him, a cultural icon. Yeah. His decisions, they matter a lot, not just for the company, but for everyone who uses their platforms. So what's he like as a leader? Is he hands-on or more big picture? He's known for being very data-driven, you know? Uh -huh. He uses testing and user data to make decisions about products. He's also super ambitious sets big goals, and pushes his team to reach them. But he's had his share of criticism, too. Oh, yeah, especially lately. Right. Some people question how he's handled data privacy, his response to misinformation on Facebook, even his whole vision for the Internet. It sounds like a lot of pressure. It is. A lot rides on him. So how's he handling it all? Yeah, how is he managing? He's shown that he's willing to change how he leads. He's talking more about social issues, engaging yeah. more with his critics, you know? Yeah. He's trying to balance his big vision for the future with the real concerns people have right now. It's a tough act to balance. Mm. It really is. Mm. But he's shown he can adapt, both as a leader and with technology. Right. And that's going to be key as Meta faces all the uncertainty and opportunities coming their way. The next few years are going to be interesting. For sure. The decisions they make will have a huge impact on tech and our lives. This deep dive has been a whirlwind of information. It has. We've gone through Meta's financial performance, their AI ambitions, the whole metaverse thing. And a lot to digest. But as we wrap things up, I'm curious, what's your overall take on Meta? Where do they stand in the grand scheme of things? You know, I think Meta is at a turning point. A turning point. They're a powerhouse, no doubt, but their future depends on how they deal with all these challenges we've talked about. Can they make the metaverse work? Yeah. Can they stay ahead in AI while still being ethical? How will they adapt to all the regulations? Good questions. Huge ones. Yeah. Only time will tell how it all plays out. But for our listener, you know, someone trying to make sense of it all, what's the most important thing to take away from this deep dive? I hope they come away understanding that meta is complicated. 
It's easy to just see the headlines, the profits, the controversies. Right. But it's more than that. Meta is powerful. They can do good and they can do harm. And it's up to all of us to hold them accountable. To hold them accountable. To demand better, to shape the future of tech so it benefits everyone. That's a good point. We're not just passive users, right? Exactly. We have a role to play. We can shape how technology develops, make sure it serves us. By staying informed, asking the tough questions, demanding better from these companies, we can make tech more fair, more beneficial. I think that's the perfect way to end this. It has been a fascinating look into Meta. It has. And I hope our listener feels like they can keep exploring these issues. Me too. And remember, the future of tech... It's not set in stone. Mm. It's being written right now, and we all have a hand in writing it. And that wraps up our deep dive into Meta. Thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure being here. <laughs>